Welcome to an expanded edition of Local Edition on Time Warner Cable. I'm Steve Swatt with the Sacramento Report. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about transportation from a rural perspective. My guest this segment is Brian Dolly, a member of the State Assembly from Lassen County, which is, is, about, uh, is about as rural as you can get in California. It is. Thanks, Steve, for having me. Uh, you know, I, have, I represent the largest assembly district in the state. It's 25,000 square miles. It's uh, seven full counties and parts of two others. So I have a, a large geograph area, geographical area uh, to move around in up there. So let's talk about the transportation issue. I mean, it's a statewide problem, and p there's billions and billions of dollars in uh, um, maintenance work that has to be done. And I guess the, one of the big problems is the gas tax just can't handle that anymore. There's not enough revenue in the gas tax and hasn't been raised in 20 years. Uh, also, you have a number of uh, motorists who aren't paying a gas tax. They drive electric vehicles. And so there's a, a, a dearth of revenue. And that's a particular problem in the North State. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have to travel qu long distance. Let me give you an example of uh, most of the people in my district. So uh, in my case, I live uh, four and a half hours from the state capitol. There's only five stoplights between my home and the state capitol. So we're on two-lane highways and the freeway most of the time. Uh, but uh, I also have to drive uh, 50 miles one way to pick up a prescription. So the closest Walmart to my home is 75 miles away. So most of the people in my district uh, are in rural communities uh, spread out through the district and have to travel long distances uh, to, to uh, get their services that they need. So there have been some plans to do a by the mile uh, tax, uh, which is something that I think is be unfair. The rules will be the rural people, the rural areas will have to uh, fund the people in the congested areas. So uh, that's going to be something that will be def difficult for us to swallow. So let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the possible solutions that folks at the Capitol have been talking about. Uh, one is increasing the gas tax, and we've had a special session now for what nine months or so, and there's been no conclusion or agreement as to what to do. So pa increasing the gas tax is one. As you talk, uh, uh, mentioned, another proposal is charging folks for the miles they drive. Another proposal is a flat fee for like electric vehicles uh, that don't use, uh, don't buy gasoline and things like that. Uh, the, the, I understand clearly, especially in the rural areas, why it would be so onerous to charge folks by the mile. Um, but that has gained some traction, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it has. Uh, unfortunately, it, for my district, I believe that we would be a, a, a donor area more or less than a receiving area. And so uh, there are some of the problems are absolutely we've had cars that are getting higher mileages now, and, that, yeah. and that's great for the climate, and that's great for people who are having to buy fuel. Uh, but we have not raised the, the gas to, uh, excise tax. It's 18 cents. It's been there for a long time. And, uh, and we have people who are driving electric cars who are being subsidized, by the way, uh, through okay. carbon offset monies and uh, those incentives. So it, I find it ironic that we subsidize uh, people who use the road to buy a car that's going to help the environment, but we don't uh, take care of the road. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a balance in there, and the balance is definitely not uh, penalizing one part of the state versus the other. And you know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the rural parts of the areas uh, are different than where we have, I don't have mass transit in my area, quite frankly, because there's not enough people to support it. And I get that. Um, so, you know, the people who use mass transit, which we subsidize by carbon offset monies, uh, are getting a benefit uh, of that tax and not uh, just penalizing the people in my area. So as, as, as California has grown, uh, the, the legislature has become, is represented by, you know, more urban um, lawmakers. So from your perspective, the rural perspective, what what's the answer, do you think? What would you like to see on your wish list? Because you recognize something has to be done. Well, first off, I would like to see people who are, um, you know, getting subsidized to, to drive electric cars pay for the road base or for the transportation system likewise. Yeah. Uh, I've also uh, tried to uh, bring legislators out to our district. I, my goal is to educate legislators on that, you know, this is a very large state and that um, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So we need to come up with a system where um, people who are using the, the user pays, and that's really how it was with the original gas tax, uh, but quite frankly, there's just not enough revenue there. I think there's some opportunities also in streamlining the red tape to get these projects done. We spend more in California to 
provide uh, public projects than most other states. I mean, I'm giving an example. You're talking about the environmental reviews? Yeah, the environmental reviews, the the um, just cost overruns. I don't think we do a good job of. I mean, look at the Bay Bridge. I mean, we, we spent yeah. billions more than what the estimates were, and that's all tacked onto uh, the taxpayer. And so I think there's a lot of opportunities. I'm having to do bills in my district to replace bridges that are already existing. Uh, we're not talking about building new ones. We're talking about existing bridges. We've already done the environmental work once. Why do we have to do it again? We just need to go in and be able to fix those projects. If it's a new project, absolutely we should do uh, the environmental uh, review. But in some cases, I think there's a lot of opportunities where we could send, save billions of dollars, which could go right back into the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one aspect of this um, fee or tax per, per mile is that how do you figure out uh, how far people are driving. I mean, there's one proposal, I guess it would be voluntary to put a GPS on your car. Well, that opens up all sorts of so inter I'm interesting possibilities. I'm a big proponent of, of you know, private property rights and privacy. I actually sat on the privacy committee for some time. Uh, I, I don't want a GPS tracker on my car figuring out where I'm going, and you know, I think that's one of the freedoms. Uh, by the way, you know, I farm, I'm a farmer. I have six miles of dirt road that I drive, when I turn off of the state highway onto my, to, to get to my farm, it's six miles one way. So that's many times a day I go in and out of there, but it's on private road that, that I'm actually a donor because I'm using gas that I pay a tax on that I'm not driving on a state highway. So there are a lot of complications with doing a, a per mile uh, rate and trying to figure out who's going to, how they're going to pay. What if you drive out of state? I mean, there's a lot of really, I think, uh, cumbersome things that are taking away some freedom. We need to get a, a system in place that allows us to uh, use or pay and, quite frankly, use some of the monies we already generate in a more efficient way to uh, take care of the this infrastructure that's needed. I know there's one proposal out there to snap a picture on your cell phone of your odometer and send it in once a year. I mean, yeah, well, so every time you leave the state, in my case, I live, you know, 75 miles away from the Oregon border and about 100 miles from the Nevada border, and I do business outside of the state with my company. Every time I leave, I'm going to try to figure out how many miles I drove out of the state. Those are just, I think, going to be some challenges that we're going to be facing. Uh, other than the possibility of having those who use the highways and don't don't buy gas, as which, which we talked about, uh, to help fund, fund this, uh, are the Assembly Republicans generally of mind that there's enough money already in the general fund and that you should just pay for the road repair out of, out of that instead of tacking on a new new tax or fees? Well, I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but I, I do uh, think that there's probably some support for people who are uh, being subsidized to drive electric vehicles that they pay their fair share. Uh, I know there's a lot of agreement on the fact that we should cut the red tape and we should uh, you know, streamline the process of the environmental review so that we can actually do more with the money that we have. I think those are places that we can agree. And I, I actually think the governor's probably there too. It's just trying to get it through the legislature. I mean, I don't speak for him, mm -hmm. um, but he's been in favor of trying to uh, uh, you know, move in a in a in a seek, seek with you know the California Environmental Quality Act right. to get that back to where it was originally, and that we use it as a tool to take care of the environment, not as a tool to extract uh, and drive the cost up of these projects. Very briefly, we're almost out of time. Uh, we've just seen a, a Republicans and Democrats come together uh, on the managed care mm -hmm. organizations and that that tax. Do you, after nine months of trying to figure out something on transportation, do you expect something? You know, I'm always optimistic. I was very much engaged in the, the MCO, and uh, I look forward to working with anybody that's interested in uh, helping make this state a better state. All right. Brian Dolly of the North State, Lassen County, thank you very much for coming by and talking pleasure. about this important issue. We appreciate it.